You highly welcome my dear brothers and sisters out there. I'm glad that you just clicked to watch this particular message. Today, I'm going to be using this time in order to answer some questions in regards to the Bantus, who they are, and uh, in regards to the question that the brethren, brothers and sisters who have asked me this question in regards to the Bantus. So in today's topic, we're going to be talking about the untold truth about the Bantus and the things that you needed to be able to really understand the deep mysteries and the, the real truth, the truth of the matter in regards to who the Bantus are and the things which is going on in that particular continent, in the continent of Africa, West Africa, East Africa, Central Africa, and down all the way when you talk about some part of or even North Africa. And these are the things that we need to be able to really understand. So this is time. I want us to be able to really take this time in order to dive into the explanation and be able to really take a step to be able to really understand what a Bantu, the Bantus, who the Bantus really are. So you need to be able to understand that before the time of, during the time of Yahushua, some things happened that people are not even aware of that led to the coming of the um, Romans. In the sense, the Romans we have been told uh, literally not the Romans, but the people we have been told at the time that the Romans were going to come. So, but you need to be able to understand that before the time of the coming of the Romans, there were people who were in a place. And these people who were in a place, which is the ancient land of the Phoenician Canaanite, the ancient land of the Phoenician land, which is what they call, you know, talk about now, Middle East or wheresoever. And that place is actually the land of Canaan and which is still part of the continent of Africa. So these people who were in that particular place, at the time, they were doing some things which were, which were no longer in, in perfect alignment with what they were supposed to be doing. So but something happened along the way. A messenger was being sent in order to warn people who we are doing things in that Phoenician land of the Canaanite because the time for the purging of that land has reached, has come. In order for it to be purged, a messenger was being sent forth. The word was being sent forth in order to warn the people who were there, the people who were doing some, you know, who were doing what they were doing. And so that warning, you need to be able to understand something that there were people, there are people who took heed. When when you go into the scripture, the scripture talked about when you see Jerusalem being encompassed by army. Because this time around, the Most High is going to use that, you know, the, the, the Romans as an instrument to be able to come and desolate that place which is called Jerusalem. Remember what the scripture said that, you know, the Bible makes us to understand that the Most High said that he's going to defend Jerusalem for his, for his name's sake. Which means something has happened even before the coming of the Romans in order for the Romans to be able to de desolate the Phoenician land of the Canaanite. But there's something that you need to be able to understand. The people who were in that ancient land of the Phoenician land of the Canaanite, the place which is called Jerusalem is the land of the Phoenician land of the Canaanite. There's no doubt about it. You need to be able to understand that. The place which is called Jerusalem, the place which, is, which you see people, for example, they called Jerusalem or Israel is the land of the Phoenician land of the Canaanite. Because remember, when you go back in the book of Deuteronomy, what the scriptures speak about, that he's going to take them out from a certain land and then he's going to bring them into the land, which is the land of the, the, land of the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Jebusite, and so on and so forth. So the people dwelt in the land of the Phoenician land of the Canaanite. But you need to be able to understand something. The warning that came to the people who were in that place, in that ancient land of the Phoenician Canaanite, was that, when they see Jerusalem being encompassed by army, let them know that the desolation thereof is already near. And so what happened is that they need to be able to flee. Now, you need to be able to understand that there are some that took heed to this particular instruction. Now, what is it? These are the things that you need to be able to understand. What is it that they were doing in that particular place that would warrant them to leave so that they... Romans, you know, when the Romans come, their desolation is not going to touch them. So what, what I want you to be able to understand is that these people were doing something in that Phoenician land of the Canaanite, which is called Jerusalem, which is called Israel at that time. So, but now it has to be desolated. Why? Because 
they were doing something which was not in alignment. So they have gone out of order of what they were supposed to be doing. And so what happened is those people who were rulers or who were the ones who were ruling the people in Jerusalem in, during that particular time, like I said, they have gone out of course and order. So what happened is that because of those things which they have done, somebody is going to come and desolate them. So, but what happened is that you need to be able to understand that these people who took, who were involved in the, in the things which they were doing at that time in Jerusalem, they fled off. They fled off. I want you to bear that in mind because it's very, very critical and important in order for you to understand what took place or what happened or how Bantus were being created or were being formed. So these people who were in Jerusalem or who were, you know, the leaders of the people who were the ones who were running, running the, um, the mosaic law and the things, the elders of the people, the, you know, the people who were the ruling class at that particular time, the people who were there, they knew about this warning and they knew that there was something which they were doing that warranted the Romans in order for the Romans to come and do what and destroy the, and and to come in order to destroy that particular place. So what happened is that they, they ran away according to the instruction. But remember, some of them, when they ran away, still continued. They had in mind. So they still continued the same practice of what they were doing in the ancient land of the Phoenician land of the Canaanite. So they had a religion. They had a means through which they have been doing a lot of things. They have their, their structures and everything intact. All what they did was to be able to run does not mean that they have already been, you know, uh, they have already gone and no longer practicing what they were doing. Even when you go into the, um, uh, uh, the book of um, where the Bible talk about that when children of Israel, when the Most High removed them, he placed them in what? In the place which is called Hal Halem in Elam and other places. And there they continued doing what's, you know, serving the ally that is serving the things which they used to serve because that was why they now decided not to stay in the land of a certain people in order to go because they call those people hidden the place where they were being put in they call them hidden so they decided to be able to continue so what i want you to be able to understand is that these people had a religion or they which they had formed and through this religion which they had formed they used it at that time in order to control the people and through that controlling of the people, but what they were controlling, what they were doing to the people was literally to take a lot of, you know, energy to what from those particular people when they themselves, a lot of things, they remain unchanged, but being used in order to extract energy. So, but they, were, they had to be able to flee because what they were doing was not even in accordance with, you know, with the law, you know, itself. So what happened is that they fled or so many of them fled into the continent of Africa or where they talk about, you know, the continent of Africa. So this is what you need to be able to understand. Towards their journey, these people who were the ruling class as the instruction was. So now what happened is when they fled into that particular place where they needed. So some, like I said, when Yahushua spoke this, now some took to that heat. Some, because they were of the ruling class, so they got this message also. They got this information. So they had to be able to do what to flee. They ran from which people? From the invasion, invaders, which are the Romans. So when they ran into the continent of Africa, that religion which they were practicing which is the religions of, you know, you can call it the religion of Judaism. You can call it the religion of um, um, back to Torah or whatsoever. You know, I mean, just the religion which they were practicing at that particular time. Judeal religion, which they were practicing at that time when they were in the ancient land of Phoenician land of Canada. But now they have, been, they have run away, getting an information to run away. So when they run away into the, in, into the inner part of the continent, which is another land of the Phoenician land of Canaanite, right? So now when they ran into the inner part, they went there and they established the same things, the same structure of the religion which they were building or which they were doing in, the, in this part of the Phoenician land of the Canaanite before the Romans came. And now they have shifted from one angle now to the other. So when they left, this is what took their journey towards the areas where you talk about, you know, 
through to Egypt. Some people, when you talk about also the area where they call today is Sudan. And then what happened? They landed in a place which is called West Africa. But there's something that you need to be able to understand. When they came, these people, this religious sect of people who we are ruling the ancient land of the Phoenician land of the Canaanite, they went into the west coast of Africa. They established a kingdom. Now, this kingdom is a place where they all, you know, just, just like their union, their union, their, 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 their continue, the continuation of their religion, which they were practicing in that particular place, they have now reestablished it in what? In the west coast of Africa. And so when they were about to reestablish it, there were people, when they were moving towards these particular places, there were mixed multitudes, there were people who they were meeting, who they met along the way, along their journeys. They met a lot of people. So what happened is that when they encamp in this place, when you talk about the Central Africa, you talk about in the uh, west coast of Africa now, they came over there, they established that kingdom in the sense, you know, which is why I talk about the kingdom of Waida. What happened is that they indoctrinated they met the people whom they met over there. They used their knowledge of the indoctrination of the things which they have been doing in the place where they fled from. And they used that in order to indoctrinate a set of, you know, the people who they met in those particular area, in those particular area, which is called, um, which is in the, in the West coast of Africa. So they used that religion to indoctrinate a certain people who were already living there. So those people who they met and they indoctrinated them, which is literally they have won a soul from these people. They have converted these people from their own local way of believing or their own local way of worship into this newer religion, influx of religion, which they themselves, which they themselves brought as they were coming into the West Coast of Africa. Now, the people who bought to that idea, the people who bought to that religious, the people who bought to that ideology, of message which these people brought to them while these people fled and came into the west coast of African area. The people who bought, who took to that particular ideology, these people are the ones that you hear people talk about, the Bantus. The Bantus are a group of people who are indigenous to the land, but received a visitors, received visitors who came. When these visitors came, these visitors introduced a form of a religion, a religion, an indoctrination b brought in um, that is an ideology to them that sound good to these people. So what happened is that these people who were there took to this particular, they bought to this ideology. They now bought, now they did not rem forget that what this same thing were one of the things which they were doing before they were being chased out, before those people who are bringing this religion from them were being chased out from where they were coming from. So, but what happened is that as these people established themselves over there, so they used their influence in order to indoctrinate a lot of people who are in that place, which is called West Africa. So at the time, this, the whole people who they have indoctrinated now believed and accepted to this particular call or to this particular ideology. So, at a time, these people who, like I said, these people who accepted this call or who accepted this ideology, who accepted this religion, which, which is a friend, which is um, an alien religion to the people who were already in the West Coast of Africa before these people came. So those people who accepted it, the people who came called them Bantus. You understand it. So they call them Bantus in order to identify that these people are the ones that are what believers in their own truth, in their own faith, which they have brought to them. So the same thing that you see when they talk about Christians are first called Christians in Antioch, that is the same way that you need to be able to see that these people who are called Bantus are a sect of people who first, that is to say, who we are called Bantus because they believe on a religion or they believe on an ideology which was being taught to them by the people who came in their own domain. So these people who bought this particular ideology, what happened is that this ideology now, which is called Bantu, now had to be able to do what? To spread like white fire. Because those people now who are Bantus, who were indigenous, 
who are indigenous to the land of the Canaanite, the Perizzite, the Jebusite, the Hagarite, and, and so much. So those people now had to be able to, so the, the, the message of that Bantu message now, because these people who have come have already indoctrinated them. So what happened is that this message now spread like white fire. So this is the reason why you see that if you are talking about anything that has to do with Bantu, you always trace their own origin of the Bantu, the beginning, the place where those them Bantu started up and spread like white fire from the place which they know today. A lot of people talk about what border between what between the Cameroon and Nigeria. Why is it like that? Because we are talking about a place which is the place where the collaboration, that is the gathering of these people who came forth and they established their own kingdom there to form their own religion, to continue their own religion and use that religion in order to indoctrinate the people there. And they called those people Bantus. So the Bantus now started spreading like white fire. And so they were able to indoctrinate their fellow brothers who were in places because remember that before this particular time there was no such thing as what as demarcations of what of lands there was no such thing as congo dr demarcation or when you talk about um cameroon nigeria senegal and all these places you know so the thing now started spreading like white fire and so when it spread like white fire what happened is that so many people who are in the modern day congo dr Democratic Republic of Congo, when you talk about Zae, when you talk about Angola, you talk about um, Uganda, you talk about Kenya, you talk about South Africa. So a lot of people who were indigenous to that particular place. Now, since the message of this Bantu have originated from here, it was very easy for it to spread like white fire because his, their own fellow brethren were all in that same continent. So what happened is that those people now has been gotten through this ideology because their fellow brethren were able to now also continue sharing this same message with them. So it was a booming time at that time when it occurred. So a lot of people now began following, now living their own tradition to be able to follow this newer version of religion which has been introduced to them so it became so this is why i say that when you go back to the history of the reality of what happened this is what took place even before the coming of the romans the, the romans were late comers the british people were late comers when it comes this is what why i've been saying this that the romans were late comers the British people were latecomers when it comes to using religion as an instrument for indoctrination or as an instru instrument of colonialism. That there are people who have been doing things for the longest. So those people who entered there, they have already established a, 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 a kingdom. Because remember, just like I said, while these people were chasing them, they had to come over there. And when they came over there, they established their own kingdom. But before the establishment of their own kingdom, they used their influence and indoctrinate the people who were around there. And those people who were being indoctrinated were called Bantus. And from there, that is the reason why when you see somebody, a Bantu in Kenya, a true Bantu who has a real knowledge of what, of a Bantu, of, of the origin of Bantu, they are going to point you to West Africa. They are going to point you to Nigeria. They are going to point you to um, uh, places like Cameroon. They are going to point you towards that area. If you see somebody who is a true you know, Bantu who has a real knowledge of where the Bantu, the origin of the Bantus began. They are going to, from South Africa, they are going to point you to West Africa. From Congo, they are going to point you to West Africa. When you talk about, uh, I'm using the West Africa because it's the term that is being called West Africa today, but originally it is not West Africa. So what happened is that these people are all, need to be able to understand it. It was as a result of that influence, of that call, of that particular indoctrination that now spreads. So this is why so many of them are part of the people who are trying to go back into that law of Moses because it was the same indoctrination of things which we have been taught to the people at the time when these people came over. So this was the instrument which they used. What you need to be able to understand is that this was actually the time when you know, when you talk about indoctrination or using a religion as an instrument in order to conquer a people who have not been contacted using a religion as a means of colonialism. Like I said, there are people who have migrated before 
the coming of these people actually. They have migrated, you know, through the course of time for the longest, right? So, but there are people, these ones who came later on were people who you who used this Bantu or who used their religion as an instrument. Just the same way that you see that when you talk about um, religion of Islam, for example, somebody had to be able to use it as an instrument to be able to bring it into the west coast of Africa or into the continent of Africa. Literally, what I mean by into the continent of Africa, because when you talk about continent of Africa, do not just think that the shape of where they just called continent of Africa is just Africa. No, Africa all the way extends from even Iraq. People talk about all those Syria and part of all those areas. There ain't no such thing as what as Middle East. You need to be able to understand when you talk about all those places where they talk about um, Israel, um, um, talk about the, the, the whole land of the Phoenician land of Canaanite are all parts of the same place, which is what, which is the Hermetic land where a certain people are living in order to enter to another side of their own land. So what I want you to be able to understand about the Bantu is that it is a name that is being used to attach to the people who had believed or who had adopted this way of life or this religion which was being taught to them by these invaders, by these people who ran into their domain. So they saw it as something, you know, just like you see that the people say religion of Christianity, you know, that the, the Romans introduced Christianity to the people. When this religion, which I'm telling you, which is the religion of Judaism, was there in the west coast of Africa before the coming of the Romans. So how can a Roman be the one that introduced Christianity into the west coast of Africa? No, they were late comers. Because these people have already used this religion of Judaism to conquer that particular... How, did they, how were they able to do this? They were able to do it through this means, which I've just told you. So this is why when they all fled, the people who fled, they established themselves. Now remember, and not all, some people were able to, even at the time that they came over there in the West, so it wasn't just maybe the spread of the band to just happen in the continent or in the West Africa alone. No, it spread across and then continue even across the sea. This is why you see so many people, when you come into the contact, you know, when you go into the history and the truth of what happened, there are people who came into what, into contact with what, with the ocean. Knowing that these same Romans who are coming, who we are chasing after them. These were the same people they are still going, that the Romans were still going to come and look after them. So which was why they now continued their journey. They, some decided not to stay in the continent itself. And some continued moving further, which is why you now see people exploit. When you talk about um, um, ex, um, discovering of what or seeing the places which is called when you talk about the Caribbeans and the Americas. Because there is where you now see the same thing that is happening. A time came that when they came, people who were exploiting, that is opening up the continent. There were people, just like I said, the people who came over in the west coast of Africa and they established their own kingdom there. Not all stood there because they were one to run. So some knew that, what, that the fight has, has not finished, that the Romans were still coming. So while others, since they have established their kingdom, others continued the journey. The running over. So this is how they now went and continued their indoctrination in the places which is called the Americas. When you talk about the Caribbeans, when you talk about, you know, the different places, right? So these are the things that you need to be able to understand about the trust. You know, when you talk about not, you know, the the the, the trans, the over, oversee. That is when you talk about people who are in, in diaspora or in different places. But primarily now, when I talk about these particular people who are called Bantu, so you can see a brother who is a Bantu, in the truth of, when you talk about, in the things about the, the back to Torah or Mosaic law or Judaism, found in what, in different places like in the Caribbean, they had to practice those things because these are the things which they know before the introduction of the Romans. Like I said, the Romans were late comers. You see, so these people have been practicing these things. They have known these things before the Romans. So what the Romans were trying to do was to be able to desolate, to destroy the things which these people have established. So like I said, these people were, were and you know that it has been their fear that the Romans were going to come. 
So because you remember that what they really, some of them saw and say that, that Yahushua is about to hand them over. That the way that he is doing, that they are seeing him as if he is trying to hand them over into the hand of the Romans. And that is what he was doing. You need to be able to understand it because they had to, in order to do so that they had to be able to really flee. Because a lot of things, a lot of things which we have been done in that ancient land of the Phoenician land of the Canaanite, now they have come over in this side of the Canaan in order to continue what they were doing. Now indoctrinating so many people using the religion and continue, ex, you know, bringing. So it is now time for you to know the real truth. So what I'm saying is that. The Bantus is a name used the same way that you see Christians were first called Christians in Antioch. So the Bantus are first called Bantus in what in the West Africa. So Bantu is not a name of any tribe, but it is an act, is a form of a religion which was being created or which was being formed, which was, you know, which was being used to identify the people who believe on the message which was being taught to them by those people who came into their domain. So the people who bought to that ideology were called Bantus. So these are the Bantus. These are the Bantus. So this is why you see that what they mixed, a lot of things were being mixed with their own what, with their own language, because now it is now time for them to be able to do what to be nature through. This is why you now see they had to be taught the things that has to, that was written in the book of Leviticus. So it is now, you know, that mosaic doctrine needed to be impacted in the life of these people. But that is why now the higher call has come over for those who need to be able to really know and understand. So I just give, you know, my dear brothers and sisters, you know, those who have been asking me about the Bantus to be able to know that the Bantu is an ideology, is, is, a, is, a, is a name that was being used to identify a people who believe on the Judea, and that is when you talk about the, 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 the mosaic message of the people who ran. So they came over there, they established themselves, and they used that as an instrument in order to conquer that particular area. So people who, the first, you know, one of the first people who even used this, the religion as an instrument in order to conquer a people. Now, it is not something which was being done forcefully, like, if, like the way that the British or the Romans did theirs. Because the Romans and the British people, people had to force people in order for them to believe or to accept their own. That is why they had to use a gun point. But these people rather know they have to be able to bring it to you and allow you to accept it. So when you accept it, when you bought to that particular ideology, then you are a Bantu. So this is unlike to the British. You know, they knew that some people have already entered. And in order for them to enter in that territory... It is going to be difficult for them. So the only option they have is to be able to force their own way in. That is why they had to, when you talk about the Romans. So they knew that these people that they were chasing after had run away. And now they have come here also, which is in the west coast of Africa. And they have established themselves. And now they have indoctrinated the whole people over here. So what are they going, what do you think that they are going to do? They ain't got no any other option. But rather than to do what, than to force themselves in, that is why they had to use gun. If you try to go against what they were doing, they had to, they, they, they're going to beat the hell out of you. What am I saying? Because when you see the people of uh, Alauda Equano, he, te he told you things about the people who, you know, so when you talk about all these them circumcisions of things and people who are talking about the things that has to do with the law of Moses, these were the people who were being indoctrinated at that time. And they were called Bantus. So, and the coming of the British people, or the coming of the Romans, were to force themselves. This is why they use Catholicism in order to come and penetrate these people who have already established themselves over there. You need to be able to understand what is going on. So, I just make this particular message for my brothers and sisters, those who have been asking me in regards to this, you know, the Bantus, that you need to be able to really understand the truth and the reality of what is going on. You are greater. Than just being a Bantu. You are, if you are in Yahushua, you are more than all these things, you know. So this is the reason why you need to be elevated. And that is the reason why I elevate my brothers and sisters beyond having just, you know, just an ordinary knowledge about the Bantus. But seeing the better call, a higher call of where Yahushua is trying to bring you to. It is time to be elevated, my dear brothers and sisters out there. And I pray, may the most High, whose name is Yahuwah. 
be exalted and be elevated through the name of Yahushua. You all remain strong in the name of Yahushua. Shalom, shalom, shalom to you all. Shalom.